Um, huh? Everyone who's watching at home, welcome to this very special live stream where I'm joined from joined by two actual blondies in China. Um, so joining me today, I have Nico and I have Rachel, um, who are both currently living in Beijing. And I myself am joining you from Sydney. So these guys should take over my channel name because <laughs> I obviously don't deserve it. Um, <laughs> but lovely to see you both. How are you going? Hi. Good. So good. Excited to chat yeah. with you guys. But Beijing yes. has been awesome. It's been good recently. Yeah. Oh, we'll I miss be back it so soon, much. Amy. Fingers crossed. At the moment, um, Australians were not allowed to leave Australia unless we have a really good reason. And at the moment, China is an accept accepting foreign visitors right now. So fingers crossed. Um, fingers crossed we, uh, yeah and get back soon as possible. But lovely to have you guys on the stream today. And um, I think most of my audience are familiar with you, Nico. Um, we've done a live before together, but maybe people are quite new to you, Rach. So uh, would you like to introduce yourself super quick for everyone watching the stream today? I would love to. So my name is Rachel. As you can see, Rachel Meets China is my uh, YouTube handle. Um, so I am from the US and I moved to China in 2015 after I graduated from university. I was a teacher for three years, first in Hunan in Hanyang. Um, and then I taught in Guangzhou for one year. And then I moved to Beijing two years ago where I currently do wow. like marketing and media. Um, and I've been traveling and living in China since then. And I've been blogging and using Instagram and all of that stuff for yeah. the past five years. Yeah, yeah. guys, I, Rachel was one of the first people I followed on Instagram. And if you don't already, you have to go check out her Instagram. She takes like, I don't know, Nico, can you agree with me? She takes some of the most yes. stunning photos. Oh, you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Like the photos. As well. Do you feel do you <laughs> take your own photos? I take my own photos. So like I have a tripod and sometimes I have a remote Crazy. with me um, to set up because I travel by myself a lot. And you you know how difficult it is sometimes yeah. asking people to help you take photos mm -hmm. when you're by yourself. And mm -hmm. then you're like, oh, wait, can you try it like this? Can you try it like this? So I've learned it's just easier yeah. if I learn how to do it all myself. Um, and yeah. it's also lots of fun to do it by myself too. So it's all me, one woman too. Also, I love that. And I also find that when I'm um, filming by myself or taking photos of myself using a tripod, you feel like you can take your time a bit more and no yes. one's rushing you. You can, you know, make all the adjustments that you want. But I had no idea that you're taking all those fabulous photos by yourself because guys, if you're watching, just t get your phone and just like look up Rachel's account right now on Instagram. Like. <laughs> It's like okay. her with this flowing red dress on the Great Wall and everywhere. like this very dramatic snow falling everywhere. Like, oh my goodness. It's such a vibe. People are like, how do you travel in that dress? And like, could you like wear a dress Literally. everywhere you go? But the secret is like, I don't wear it when I'm hiking. I change into it or I wear it under my clothes. It's a secret though. <laughs> Because it would be really difficult to always wear. <laughs> I would yeah. never be able to just like put a dress on though and look that like like flowing and beautiful at the top of the mountain. Yeah. Like I would just literally just be like sweating. And, like, that's that's why I always turn around so you can't see my face, all my sweat. It's just my yeah. hair. So I'm hiding my yeah. sweaty face. <laughs> I have a Jack and my pictures still aren't as good as Rachel. <laughs> you have a Jack. <laughs> you have a Jack. But honestly, I'm kind of jealous. Having a Jack is really handy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that sounded it's weird. Handy. <laughs> I wish my Jack will I don't mine isn't called Jack. Mine is called Delk, but I wish my, I wish my Delk was here could who could help me. Oh. But you do all your own filming and stuff too, don't you, Amy? I do. I think I'm just feeling a little needy. It's been four months <laughs> since I've seen my boyfriend. Aww. So, yeah. But it's okay. Yeah, we FaceTime and we're, you know, taking advantage of the 21st, 21st century uh, inventions. So, yeah, it's all good. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Good to be here talking with you guys today. We have a fun live stream planned for everyone. So if you are tuned in, we are going to be discussing a whole heap of fun topics. I'll give you a little rundown so that you know what you have to look forward to. First, we're going to be talking about Beijing and because actually at one time we were all in Beijing at the same time, but didn't know each other. Well, Nico and Rachel have known each other for a while, but 
I was there but didn't know them. Um, so we're going to be talking about Beijing and life in Beijing. We're going to be talking about like day trips around Beijing, about day trips in China in general. We're going to be talking about the Great Wall and like how to do it well. We actually have sitting with us today a Great Wall, a Great Wall expert. Um, <laughs> Rachel will be getting into that later. And then we're going to be talking about hutong houses, and we're also going to be talking about what it's like to be an English teacher in China. So if you're interested in any of those topics, please stick around. Please、um, send your、uh, chats and comments, and we will do our best to answer as many things as possible.、Um, but first, Nico, I heard on the grapevine slash you told me directly <laughs> that you have prepared <laughs> you have prepared for us a little get to know you activity today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna play a little game to like start off, and everyone can feel free to join in and type their favorite things. It's gonna be quite fast,、um, oh, and it's called like this or that. So let me figure out how to do this.、Um, okay, we're doing <laughs> screen sharing here. <laughs> oh yeah. So, okay, here we go. Okay. Can you see?、It? I can. Oops. Oops. Okay. Oops. Oops, it was there. there? Yeah. Now it's gone.、Yeah. Oh, there it is. is it Is that, okay, great. Okay, so it's called this or that. I'm sure you played the same before. You've got to pick. Got to pick one. So it's going to be quite fast. You've got to. You've got to tell me which is which is the one you would pick. So we'll start off with something、mm. easy. Okay. So tea or coffee? Coffee. Tea. Oh, one for each. I、Ooh. would have gone for tea a few years ago, but actually, since moving to China, I would go for coffee. So British. That's so、oh, yeah, weird. I'm... Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> Like China is the land of tea. I know. I, just, I, just <laughs> I know. I should drink tea more too, but I just. Oh my gosh, it's the best. It's the best、often. place to just like go and hang out. I found on a completely well, kind of related note. I've been going to a Chinese tea house in Sydney every week now. It's and I just I、wow. feel so happy. I've I've found. A really awesome environment to practice my Chinese and drink tea and make、oh. friends. So yes, would recommend everyone、oh、go find、God. their closest tea house. <laughs> I don't think I've like appreciated really good tea from like a tea house or anything. Yeah, I haven't really done that. So I think maybe maybe I'm missing out. And you are. No, I need to do more of that. that. Maybe we should、oh, well, do that, Rachel. Let's go for a tea. We should do, we should do a, go to a tea ceremony one day. I have not done that in China, which is so weird. I should have、yeah. been here for a while. Okay,、mm-hmm. let's go for the next one. Right. So、oh, next、yeah. one is <laughs> beach beach or mountains. Mountains. <laughs> oh, it's really hard because I'm from Sydney. I'm from Sydney, and we have some of the best beaches in the world. But the fact is, I, you know what, beach, beach, because I would love to go to the beach right now. I like both beach.、Mm. Yeah, I like both. What about you? I would, I would say mountains. Mountains. Okay.、Yeah. Sunrise or sunset? Sunset. <sighs> Ooh, that's hard. Ooh, I would say sunrise. I'll say sunrise. Yeah. Amy, yeah, we take I... the opposite one every single time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're destined to be good friends, right? <laughs> Opposites attract, you know. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I just can't、oh. can't get up for a sunrise. Like I've done it a few times when we were in like Patagonia, and it was worth it. But it's、yeah. hard, like super hard. I, I get up at five a.m. I like my it's, sleep. It's, it's, It's super hard.、Um, yeah. I'm the same. Like I would probably prefer sunrise if I didn't have to wake up for it.、Um, sunrise、yeah. is just so magical. <laughs> you feel like you're the only one awake in the world, and everything's happening. But I just wanted to interrupt quickly、mm-hmm. to say we got a super chat saying, "Why not coffee and tea together?" I actually discovered this、yeah. beverage that drunken police god is talking about,、uh, Yuan Yang, when I was in Hong Kong last、oh. time, and it's literally a beverage which is coffee and tea together. So it's like the best of both worlds. <laughs> So, yeah, I've never heard of that. Oh my、really? gosh, it's so good! You can find、I、it in Beijing. It. Um, at, there's a, a、really? some Hong Kong cafes you can go to and get some. I've gotten it in Sydney before. It's uh, yeah, it's it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, it's wow,、famous. that sounds amazing!、Yeah. I、mm. I need to try that. Yeah, I did, super I did good. Not know that either. Sunrise is great when you've stayed up all night as well, and then you catch the sunrise. But that's that's、mm. that's、yeah. rare now. Yeah. Right next. Hotel,、Next、hostel,、one. hotel,、um, <laughs> <laughs> hostel. I do all the hostel. hostel. I've been there, I done do that. I do all the hostel, but I like a private room in a hostel. Not. Oh, that's、uh, a good. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah, actually、like、a, a very nice compliment. Yeah. 
Yeah. I would say the same thing. Like, cause when I was younger traveling, always hostel. It was the best way to meet people, especially traveling by yourself. But as we've gotten older, um, <laughs> you kind of enjoy like your own space yeah. and nicer things. You don't always like want to rough it. Um, no, I so, can't. Yeah. Yeah. I, can't well, anymore. I think in China, it's different too. I feel like the hostels in China, it's a little bit different. I prefer a yeah. hotel. Yeah. Um, we've stayed in a, good, a few hostels here that have been good. Um, we've, We've mainly picked private rooms, though, because, I mean, we're a couple, yeah. so we're just... And you're a couple, too, I, yeah. I, I like the vibe in a hostel, like, you meet more people, mm -hmm. and it's just a bit more chill, I think. Yeah. Okay, ne next one is cats or dogs? Dogs. Oh, dogs. that's hard. Oh, I love them both. Can I choose yeah. both? <laughs> yes. I've always had cats and dogs. I love them both in different ways. I don't know how cats work. Like... I was confronted with a cat <laughs> yesterday and I, I went to a friend's house and they had a cat and I was like, what do I do with you? Like, do I, do I like, yeah. fetch with you? Like, do I scratch you? And I just was very confused. Um, I just I like pet dogs. it and yeah. cuddle it. Sometimes cats yeah. have different personalities that are fun, but some can be yeah. mean. Yeah. <laughs> some cats are mean. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay, next time, next what time, about you, Nico? Time. What was your answer? Cats or dogs? Uh, Oh, dogs, definitely, definitely dogs. Okay. Have you not seen any of my videos? All dogs mm, appear in all funny. my videos. Like, I stroke all the dogs in oh. any, everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was one today. I was meant to go see Bonnie today, but um, we, we couldn't because the weather was a bit rubbish. <laughs> so... I got the that's what you do with cats, Amy. They're decorative. I love yeah. that. Yeah, just look at them, appreciate <laughs> them from a distance. <laughs> they add to the decor in your house. We really so, we do. saw a really we met a really good dog today in Albacaf, and that, that was good. I got some strokes, so I was happy that that mm. yeah, helped. That's a great okay, idea. Next, strokes. next, oh yes, <laughs> Literally, and every week, like the woman knows me. She was like, "Get any pizza today?" I was like, "Yeah, can we have three, please?" <laughs> she was like, oh, "That's so long." I know. So cute. Okay, next one: sweets or chocolate? Chocolate. What is what do you mean by sweets? Is that like Candy. anything besides chocolate? Yeah, like like Harry Potter. Like a lollipop. Okay. Yeah, like Harry Potter. Uh, chocolate, hundred percent chocolate. I'm not like a fruity candy person. I would much rather have chocolate. Yeah, mm. I like both. But yeah, train or plane? Mm, train. I, I have mm. a real fear of turbulence. <laughs> Ironically I enough, you. I hate flying. <laughs> hate it. Uh, I'd say train too, I guess. Usually yeah. plane, but train in China is fun. I like it. I like mm. the trains in China. I wouldn't choose the tra train in England. Uh, yeah, the train in America I wouldn't choose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, next one. Would you pick a horror or a comedy movie? Or oh, comedy. comedy. 100%. 100%. Same. I no horror. horror movies. Me okay. too. Me too. <laughs> Cannot eat stand out, it. Eat out or take away? Eat out. Uh, yeah, I say eat out. Yeah. Um, I probably say take away. I like eating. I like eating in my pajamas. Yeah. Well, <laughs> why don't you just go out in your pajamas? <laughs> That's both worlds. Okay. Uh, next one. Wine or beer? Mm, wine. Mm, wine. Wine. Well, I like both. I, mean, I am drinking a beer, but I do <laughs> like. <laughs> Nice. I wine. I love wine. Um, okay, now we're gonna get onto some China ones. Okay, so, oh, noodles or rice? Oh. Right now, I'm having a big noodle resurgence. Like, I'm all about the noodles, so I'm gonna say noodles. Uh, right I've been now, doing for a lot right of now. rice lately. Okay, I'm. I've been doing a lot of rice lately, but usually noodles. Yeah, mm. I love noodles. Okay, so as we've all lived in Beijing, do you prefer the summer or winter? In Beijing specifically, winter, oh, summer. What? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I hate summer. 
I it's too sweating. cold in this. It's too cold in the winter, though. I yeah, hate it. At least you're not sweating out of every orifice. Like, but you don't want to like <laughs> contain the amount of liquid flowing off your body. Like, just put on a coat, put some <laughs> hand warmers in your shoes. Like, I completely yeah. agree. I love the winter, and like, I have underfloor heating. It's so nice. Whereas I'm so <gasps> hot right now, and the aircon's um. Yeah, I like the. Oh, it's summer, oh. isn't it? Oh, yeah, how's summer it right now. now. But I, I love it. It's good. I mean, it's been a little bit rainy the past few days, but I like the summertime because you can go to the rooftops. There's so many nice rooftop bars yeah. in Beijing. Um, and usually the pools are open. There's some really nice pools that you can go to in the summertime. I just I love summer weather. Play. Yeah. Never but they're, can they're I say, closed this summer. Hmm. I like spring or autumn. Oh, spring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, next, right next in your own answer. Next one for Biggie squat or sit? Mm, uh, well, I can't squat. Like, <laughs> I would like to say I'm a very good squatter, but if it was gonna, like, if I'm gonna say foot? like, do you flat foot? Oh yeah. Oh man. Do you want oh, like wow. a demonstration? I can demonstrate. Flat foot. Yeah. Are, are you going to? Let's oh, see. I'm wearing my trackies. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to scare people. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm. Yeah. I don't look very good from like the shoulders down, so I, I won't do that. But um, yeah, I'm a really good squatter. But um. I don't think I'd want to squat for like four hours, so I'd probably say sit. No, like on the toilet, man. Oh, on the toilet. Oh, oh. I you were just saying in I general. In general, like on the side yeah. of the street with your other sit or squat. Oh. <laughs> well, I would say. <gasps> what did I say before? Did I say sit? sit? <laughs> yeah, do you prefer a squat toilet or a sit toilet? A Western toilet. Uh, I guess sit. <laughs> I'm so used, I mean, yeah. in traveling in China, I don't mind the squatties actually. I, um, I like a squat, but I can't physically it, squat that well right I now. Can't, yeah, I can't flat foot squat. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. the, problem in the problem in China is that people tend to squat on the seats. So yeah. you don't want to. Uh, go yes. anywhere near the seats so it probably when i'm in china i would prefer to squat but <laughs> i like a squat, squat but it's really different. yeah i i prefer I, in my house obviously i prefer to sit in public toilets yeah. i like a squat it's very yeah. difficult yeah. for me right now because of oh, my yeah. knee injury so yeah anyway okay let's go what do you prefer about bout, or jokes oh say? man Oh, oh so hard. good, so good. Oh, Different I think situations. Oh, exactly. Like balsa in the morning, so yeah. Like good. Yeah. Oh, but balsa in the for dinner. breakfast, balsa yes. in the evening. Yeah. Yes. Wake up with balsa, go to both. bed with balsa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I love that. Yes. Okay. Next one. Hot pot or barbecue? Ch 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 oh, that's another really hard one. Oh. I'm going to say pot. barbecue. Barbecue. I say hot pot. I, but I, I love do the like experience the of hot pot. pot. Hmm. Mm. I, I, barbecue is like a little bit more casual. I eat it a lot more often here, but I love the hot pot yeah, experience. So it, I would say hot pot. Yeah. Both. Nice. Okay. Big, big one. Hot or cold water? Cold. <laughs> cold water. <laughs> cold water. <laughs> what about you, Nico? Cold water. Yeah, all the way. Yeah. Okay, um, do you prefer the ma or the la? Oh, the ma. I love the ma. No, la, la, la. all the way. I hate, I hate Zizhou Pepper. <laughs> oh, I'm addicted to it. I like, yeah. I, I've said this so many times, so people are probably sick of me saying it, but I went through a period like a couple of months ago where I was putting like Sichuan peppercorns on everything. Like I was getting to a stage where I was putting Sichuan peppercorns on my toast on the in the morning. And I think my stomach just really, really <laughs> just had oh enough of the, of the Sichuan yeah. peppercorns. I was just probably <laughs> having like a good handful <laughs> a day. And then I had to like take a month off, but I'm reintroducing. So that's exciting. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan, but we are maybe going to go to Chung Chungqing this year. And I'm, I'm a bit Ooh. scared. I'm actually a bit scared. <laughs> But don't be scared. I'll I'll teach you how to do it. There is like it. no like you yes you need to work your way up and also when you're in Chongqing you can order like less spicy of the spicy but, but it's still super spicy but there are okay. there are things you can do to help yeah and they have these awesome desserts that are like super cooling but you don't eat them at the end you kind of eat them all the time and it's like ice and 
jellies and it really helps fight the fight the spice it's super good okay this is the last one um so girl beijing or shanghai i'll have to say shanghai it's the first city i lived in in china and it will always have a very special place in my heart Mm. i love shanghai but i'm gonna say beijing beijing is my home so so yeah. I gotta go Beijing. I gotta go Beijing. Yeah. I love I love going to Shanghai. I think I just haven't yeah. been there enough. And if I lived yeah. there, I probably would feel differently. I but have I a theory. Go I have hmm. a theory, which is um, the city you first lived in in China will always be kind of your favorite city. Um, I don't know mm. because I studied first in Shanghai and then I studied in Beijing. And when I was in Shanghai. People who had studied in Beijing already say they prefer Beijing, but then, uh-huh. yes, you know, people who go to Beijing then say they prefer Shanghai. So I don't know if there's something to that, um, but for me, I definitely had that experience. I love Be- Beijing as well. There's not a city that I would say I don't like, but Shanghai is a very special place. I think they're very different, so it's hard to compare. Like, yeah. I mean, I used to live in Nanjing, but I still prefer Beijing yeah. overall. Yeah. But it was very beautiful. But we went to Shanghai a few weeks ago and I do love it there. I think it's a bit fancy for me. I'm not really very fancy. Shanghai. Yeah. Oh. I'm more of a, I'm more of a story <laughs> than a cocktail girl. So I feel like Beijing's maybe a little bit more like maybe. I think you just need to know where to go. But Shanghai is developing so quickly. Like every time I go, it's more mm-hmm. and more modern. So mm-hmm. even yeah. like I, I think I was last there last year and if I went back now, it'd be, you know, a new apartment block or a new fancy glass building. Um, but yeah, good fun. Somebody it's just like, like, good. Um, Shanghai or Beijing, which is worse traffic? <laughs> Definitely Beijing, I would say. <laughs> Shanghai has like a lot of uh, restrictions that I just, you don't see in Beijing. I know yeah. that a lot when I went a few weeks ago. Like you, yeah. can't, cycle, you can't cycle in certain streets. In but, Shanghai or in Beijing? Yeah, in Shanghai, like Beijing, it's like free for all mm. everywhere. Yeah. But in Shanghai, there's a lot more restrictions and people stop at traffic lights. Oh. Shocking. Crazy. Really? What yeah. a concept. <laughs> the bikes, the bikes stop at traffic lights. I know. It doesn't happen here in Beijing. Um, like, actually, Rach, we have a, whoops, um, we have a message here from Emily asking, where in the USA are you from? Hi, Emily. I am from Texas, from Fort Worth area. So like northern part of Texas. Yeah. Do you own cowboy boots? (laughs) That's always the first question people ask me. Or or do you ride a horse everywhere? (laughs) I used used to have cowboy boots, but I'm not like super traditional Texas like you might think. But when I talk to people in China about it, I kind of sell it up a little bit. Like, yeah, I ride my horse everywhere, wear my cowboy boots, you know. I do the same thing. (laughs) I'm like, it's one thing I imagine from moving. I'm surfing every day, you know, I'm like, you yeah, know, I'm just bro, pretend bro. like white as a sheet, but like, yeah, I eat kind of, yeah, Australian. Well, we it up a little bit sometimes, like, you know. <laughs> we have a super chat from Chris here. Um, I'm in Australia in Sydney. Nico and um, Rachel are in Beijing. So that is our physical locations right now. Um, what, what else do we have here? Um, do we have any other questions? Blondie, when you say Beijing, your accent is really like a Pekingese. Oh, thank you. I would like to think that I have a bit of a Beijing whir. Oh, (laughs) high uh, compliment. That's very nice. That is really, really nice. (laughs) Are you speaking to me? Yes. (laughs) Or to him? (laughs) You or both. Oh, me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Or butcher Beijing. Hmm. <laughs> How's the Chinese going, um, Rachel? You speak Chinese, I, right? A little bit. Uh, conversationally, yeah. Actually, I was really yeah. great when I, like, my first, like, second or third year in China, I was taking lessons a lot. I was very conversational. So I travel, I use it. But, like, recently in Beijing, I haven't used it a lot and I've yeah. forgotten a bit. But this week, yeah. I actually started lessons again. So I'm very excited to get back into it. Yeah. Yay. That's so good. How about I feel like since I've been here five years, I should be, like, better at it. Yeah. You yeah. Know, how's yours? Um, terrible. We are, I'm going to start lessons. I tried to organize it a few weeks ago though. It just got really, really oh, busy. Nice. Um, so I really want to, because I feel like, yeah, the same, we've been here so long now and mm. it, but it's just so hard. Like, cause we just 
every spare second we we make videos like we have full-time jobs that we make youtube videos and it's yeah. so difficult but i really want to mm. try it like really get into a routine because i know quite a few words i just situation yeah. we can't do it very well yeah um, mm. a su- so we got a super chat from david and it said which Ooh. train slow or fast train oh fast, fast i like 100%. fast yeah unless uh, it's really a long fast train and then i'd just be like i'm just gonna sleep on a slow train and i'd prefer that yeah oh true 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 i'd rather have a sleeper bed if it's gonna be yeah, a little bit longer yeah yeah i like the nostalgicness of the slow train like that's quite fun but i def i love the fast train so i just feel what's the longest train you guys have been on in china <laughs> oh, not that long. i've I avoided the hours. super long ones i think i've done like yeah 12 hours <laughs> I went to well, how about you? 48 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> Where were you going? Why? Shanghai to Gansu province. Um, so literally oh across God. the country on the slowest train available. But it was really cheap and I made a lot of new friends. Like when you share a one meter square, sp- or not one meter, but when you share such a small amount of space with people for over two days of your life, <laughs> we were like brothers and sisters by the end of that trip that we were like That's, we were tired wow. it was beautiful real bonding wow oh yes I just the time really? though like i i just don't have the time to spend that long on a train yeah because <laughs> like, we get a weekend off and then it's like oh right you're there that's yeah. it you gotta go back yeah, yeah. But, back like, in those days i was time. a struggling yeah. student just need to get the cheapest train to get me to where i want to go <laughs> just get there. me there yeah, fair. Yeah. Totally fair. Yeah. Um and yes, that seems to be all of our questions for now. Um, so on to Beijing stuff. You guys are both in Beijing at the moment. Can I just ask you, first of all, what's the situation like in Beijing? I know that there was a lockdown like a few weeks ago. Is that happening anymore? Just give us a bit of a, a rundown on what's happening. Mm. Yeah, well, luckily, like, so the few cases rebroke out again. We had, like, kind of a second wave here. So things, like, were getting so much better by the end of May. And then the new cases came. Things shut down again. Uh, But recently, in the last week or so, like, moving on from July 4th, everything, like, reopened again. We're allowed to travel outside of Beijing again, which is really nice. Like, other places are starting to reopen again. Um, So it's getting a lot better now. Mm, yeah I made a video about it and it is getting a lot better like I don't feel like to be honest I don't feel like it really felt that different but Mm. there are still quite a few like restaurants that were open that still aren't open which Mm, is a bit weird and like yeah apparently we're allowed to travel and we don't need a test but like you kind of do because I wouldn't risk it you know I don't want to get some place yeah yeah especially like yeah i i just it, it's kind of one of those things like it's like technically okay but i don't know if it actually is like i know some people have yeah. had problems so it's like but generally right and i'm still i'm still working from home right now i'm not sure how long that's gonna last for um Me too. but yeah. and it's been okay though i mean we still have to show our health kit everywhere so we have to use an app yeah. on our phone before we go to restaurants and like malls and businesses and they take your temperature still um but they don't make you like sit like two places apart or anything anymore it's just a sign in mm-hmm. sheet basically they just mm-hmm. check your temperature okay. so that's not bad. i mean they did that anyway like literally from i've been doing that for months now that just feels normal now <laughs> life yeah so it just really doesn't feel yeah. like that, yeah that's um oh that's good yeah. Well, good, it's going back to normal. Here in Sydney, things are still good, but there has been a second wave in Melbourne, which is a city oh, in another no. state. So they've completely locked down that um, that city and that state. Um, and the border has closed between Victoria and New South Wales for the first time in like 100 years. So that's a bit crazy. But um, hopefully there wow. won't be a second wave in Sydney um, because it's been really nice having freedom back and being able to go out and... Um, hang out. I've started this whole meetup thing where every Sunday I'm meeting with people in Sydney, which has been super, super fun and made a cool little community here. And it would be such a shame to have to, you know, stop doing stuff like that. But so fingers crossed things uh, stay good, but um, good to hear that things are going well for you guys in Beijing uh, COVID wise. Um, Yeah. yeah. Uh, Well, also like we also don't live like anywhere near where the outbreak was. So, like, oh. it might have been a lot different from people in that area, yeah. which is what I was kind of... Yeah. I think really depended the reason. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, Beijing's so massive. 
perspective that like they kind of seem to like cut that area off and yeah everywhere else just doesn't didn't seem quite as affected so yeah fingers crossed because yeah. I heard that about Australia yeah. and oh, it's yeah. just it's just rubbish yeah and hopefully yeah, that we have a vaccine soon fingers well, crossed. Let's, not, let's not get too bogged down on it because I'm so sick of talking about uh, yeah yeah well, let's move on. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. we, you both are in Beijing. I used to be in Beijing. So I was in Beijing because I was originally studying there. I was doing an intensive language program at Tsinghua University. And then I was living with friends um, for a while after that. What are you guys doing in Beijing? Can you please tell me when you came to Beijing and why you came to Beijing? Sure. Do you want to start, Nico? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so, well, actually, we came to Beijing very similar times. I moved to Beijing in the July, and Rachel moved in the August, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. August. Really close to well, each other. June, I moved at the end of June. I came, so that was like two years ago. I moved to Beijing, um, and I was working for a company in Nanjing as a teacher, and then I moved, and I still work for the English language company, but I. And now, like, the, they have, like, an online app that the kids go on and watch once a week. And it's, like, an interactive TV show. And I present that. So it's, like, a, I'm, like, a kid. Can you, give us a, can you give us a sneak peek of your presenting voice? Like, what do you, what, what do you like when you're on this show? Like, give us a... Give well, us it's, a it's, it's, like, it's, um, well, we do, like, lessons depending on, the obviously, the, the curriculum. But I play different characters. So I have been, <laughs> I should have got a picture, I should have brought some pictures for this. I have been a scientist, a wizard, a superhero. Um, wow. Grandma, like, uh, yeah. Play a grandma, play. that's the one I'd like to see. Which is your, which, yeah. what's your favorite role to play? Um, it, me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yourself? Really? Come on. No, I'm a detective. I like I like them all, but then like uh because we do like a series, so like every lesson I was like a detective for like months, and then every lesson I was a superhero for months. So it's really fun at first, and then by the end it's like, okay, I really want to change character now. Uh yeah. but a lot of them recently have been playing me, and I like playing me. I like just being me. But I'm so obviously fun. quite yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all on like the green screen and animated, so it's, it's a really fun job. <laughs> Love it. That's awesome. Next what about yourself, Rach? Oh, yes, please. Um, and footage. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I moved into Beijing the month after you did. We had never met, though. Like, we had been following each other on Instagram, I guess, for a while. But, yeah, we moved together around the same time. And I... Um, moved here to work for an education recruitment company. Um, so we helped recruit teachers come to China. And so like a big part of my job was doing social media and marketing for that. So it was a little bit different. I was a teacher for three years, but I studied marketing and media at school in the US. And so I wanted to do that again once yeah. eventually, like I wanted to stay in China, but I wanted to do something more media related. Um, and so I was doing that for the past two years. Um, and it was it was super fun because every month I would meet new teachers who came to China and get to talk to them about like helping them learn about China, introduce them to China and all those fun questions. Um, it was really fun and exciting. Uh, so I did a lot of that. And during that time, also got to do like a lot more with blogging and Instagram and stuff. So I was doing that for that company for two years. Oh, and that's we, cool. we used to work like on the same street because they were like yes. partner companies. So that's that. That's really great. We, used, we yeah, we, our we, buildings we, were like right next to each other. So we would be like, "Hey, let's go get some malatang today for lunch." I love your malatang Mondays. I see it on your yeah, your stories on Instagram. I'm like, I want to be there. <laughs> Aww, you're with us in spirit. We haven't done that in yeah, a while I, since we've been working from home. But no, yeah. we need to go soon. Oh, it's really hot as well for malatang. It's been hot. Today. Yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, but yeah, soon. Let's be soon. soon. Yeah. Awesome yeah. stuff. So was it hard for you guys to actually come to China? Like in terms of like finding the job or like the visa process, was it difficult in terms of like what you guys came to do? 
I think finding the job was easy. There are tons of teaching positions. And I mean, the difficult part was narrowing down the kind of position you want and like mm. where you want to teach because I didn't know much about China before I came. I knew Beijing and Shanghai. I didn't know anything else really. Um, yeah. And then also the visa process was difficult. Um, yeah. And then once arriving here, just going through a lot of the language barriers and culture shock because I didn't speak any Chinese Ooh. before I came either. So I feel like those were some of the biggest points for me. Um, yeah. To me, to me, like we were actually in South America when we started applying for jobs. So um, that was like a, a little bit harder, I guess, because we were like, it was, we were in South America. We were trying to sort things like whilst we were away and then we only had like two months at home to sort everything before we came so it's a little wow. bit stressful and we nearly didn't get because you you have to come in at a certain time in the month um yeah. to do the training and we nearly didn't get the letter and then me and jack like had to like drive to manchester to get emergency visas like next day and where then we went like three days later to china so it's a little bit stressful i would say for yeah. me but then we'd also been traveling for a while so that like the ease into it was kind of fine because we were kind of used to not yeah. being at home. And Did traveling. you find there was a big expat community that you could immediately kind of get in contact with when you were in when you got to Beijing, or was that something that came slower um, to find? Um, for me, like because we went to Nanjing first, and because mm. I did training. Um, and it was a big group, you kind of automatically have friends. And then when you go to your center, you automatically are friends with all those people in your center. And Nanjing mm. is such a smaller city, like the expat yeah. community is like much tighter, I would say. When I moved to Beijing, I don't actually work with very many foreigners. And so we don't have as big of a group here. I know it's a lot different mm. for you, Rachel, because you're very, so, but we've like, so we've focused a lot more on <laughs> making videos um uh, but I felt like because it's in Beijing it's a lot of it's much bigger city and there's a lot more places to go so you don't mm -hmm. necessarily meet the same people all the time whereas in mm -hmm. Nanjing if you go to the like one or two bar that you know you're gonna bump into the same area. yeah that's true so, mm. but yeah in Beijing I found yeah yeah, Rachel mm. is a um, social butterfly, so. Yeah, tell us about how you go about meeting everyone because you have a huge social group in Beijing, Rach. So how do you yeah, go about what? finding that or making that? Um, <laughs> I guess for me, I, I was just thinking back when I first came to China, I lived in a small city. So the expat community was there. Um, it was really tight knit because there were only like 20 of us that lived in that city. So in that sense, mm. moving to a small city was very easy. But then it was like, there's nothing else to do. It's like the same group which is nice because you get to know each other really well, but it was really yeah. hard to like go out and do like the normal expat international things in China. Then I moved to Guangzhou. And for me, Guangzhou was a little bit difficult to meet people and to join the expat community. I lived a little bit farther from the city center and I yeah. didn't really, I spent time with the teachers I worked with, but it was really hard for me to meet other people. Um, mm. And then once I moved to Beijing, then I was like, okay, I'm ready to like jump in have this big international city experience, but I really want to like go out and meet people and join things. And that's the cool thing about Beijing is there are so many like expat groups and like hobbies yeah. you can join. There's sports teams. There's all this stuff that you can jump in and get involved with. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to do everything. I'm going to try it all. Um, <laughs> because when I first moved here, the first month I think was a little bit hard. I didn't yeah. like, I wasn't a teacher. Like Nico mentioned, if you're a teacher and you join with like a training group, um, you can meet a lot of people that way and get to know other teachers who work for the same kind of school as you. But for me, I was kind of like off on my own, like, and the same as Nico, not many foreigners worked at my company too. Um, so mm -hmm. it was kind of like going out with my coworkers at first. And then I joined a volleyball team. That was a huge way for me to meet people. And that was super fun. I was, I hadn't played volleyball in years since like university. So I was like, yes, I can play volleyball. Um, and a lot of the, the teams have like sponsors with a lot of the popular bars in Beijing. Um, so by going to a lot of those kind of events, I met people um, like Patty's is really popular here. Yeah. XL, like there's all like popular like sports bars and yeah. expat bars where you kind of start running into the same people. Um, and like Nico said, it is like Beijing is really big, but if you kind of hang out in the certain areas where a lot of the same foreigners will hang out, um, you can kind of meet people more and get more familiar with the crowds that kind of run around there. Yeah. So I just started hanging out in San Latoon a lot. Um, yeah. So if anybody in Beijing, you know San Latoon. Um, there's a lot of really popular bars there. So I started doing that yeah. with volleyball. 
Um, <laughs> um, and then I just also made like random friend groups from like I started doing trivia nights at certain bars. There's some really great ones like Four Corners yeah. or Qmex does one, the local. Um, and I also met some people through, I don't know, just various like hobbies and interest groups. And, you know, yeah. Nico, we have like a, there's a YouTubers in China group that I've met some people yeah. through. Um, and also just some like writing groups I'm in. Um, so after a while, and also like once teachers started arriving in China and some of them would stay in Beijing, I would meet them, help them out, and then eventually keep hanging out with them while they stayed here. So it's just kind of grown and grown um, because of wanting to be involved in that. Um, I yeah. think it kind of depends on like what you choose to do here. and. Um, where where you spend your time you know because it, it can be really yeah. hard sometimes if you are in a big area or farther away from the city center um or yeah. not 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 wanting to go to those expat bars some people just like you don't have to hang out that area some people don't like that scene so yeah there's yeah. a few different ways yeah yeah no that's really good some really good tips for how to like make a community and meet friends when you're new to a city like i've come back to sydney and it's the first time in i want to say four years that or maybe three years that i've been in one place for more than a couple of weeks so I've kind of been going wow. all at it trying to like make new friends and make a community and um get that sense of you know oh I have a group here um where I haven't really had that you know I have friends like but all in different places like a couple in Beijing a couple here a couple in you know the US a couple in Germany like but having that group all together it's really nice to have that community so it's good to just put yourself out there in that way and I think those are really good tips Rach what about you Nico do you have any ways that you went about like making a community for yourself in a new city? Yeah, well, actually, I was going to point out, like, I think like when it, it it's so different when you move somewhere, because like when you're mm. traveling and everybody's traveling and everyone's like everyone speaks to people because you're all like in hostels yeah. or like you meet people and you're all traveling and stuff. When you move to a different city, it's like a completely different like thing because mm. everybody who already lives in that say generally already have friends it's a lot harder especially as you get older and you're not at university and like you're not kind of thrown into like with people the same age as you and things like that so I do feel like the older you get I mean I'm lucky because I'm here with Jack and like we have each other and we like spending mm. our time together <laughs> that's nice I know it's really sad <laughs> but no, um, it's nice we like spending our time together. So like we kind of don't necessarily go out and meet a lot of people, but then we do have, we do have friends here, but at the beginning we kind of were like so excited to be in Beijing. We're filming and filming and filming and yeah. people, people just stopped asking us to do things. Oh, <laughs> they were like, we're like, we can't, we're filming. And then they're like, okay, we're just going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> oh well I'm keen to ch I'm I'm definitely going to be forcing my way into your life when I'm in Beijing like <laughs> there will be no excuse we are going for coffees and mala tang and hot pot yeah. it'll all be happening um, yeah I, yeah that would be good I, I, I'm excited I just like yeah we have friends we've just got to pick like what's worth it like a hangover or like a new video yeah yeah. I just saw it. Um, I've just been monitoring the the chat happening here, and there seems to be a bit of a chat about um where the best hutong is. Um, whoopsies, my little mm. my little tissue has fallen off my light. <laughs> Excuse me for one moment. <laughs> I have a very uh, I have a very uh, interesting lighting setup here. <laughs> I just have my desk light facing me, full frontal, and I've got like a tissue over it to damper it. Anyway, random. Um. Where is your favorite hutongs in Beijing? I really like Nanlo Guxiang. Um, I mm -hmm. think it's a really nice one. And I like all the um, the separate ones. Like you go down that street and you can kind of go off the different pathways. Um, do you have a favorite um, hutong in BJ? Yes, yes. Mine is kind of across the street from Nanlong Gushang. It's like the Fangjia oh, yeah. Hutong area and also Wu Daoying. There's some really nice oh, like yeah. little coffee shops and like yeah. restaurants and little bars down mm. Wu Daoying. It's a little bit more touristy, I guess, but I like it. Yeah. It's cute. But then also if you like go further in, there's like like the Modernista Hutong. Do you guys know Modernista? Oh, yeah. no, oh, no, that, no, 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 no. Oh, it's a really cool bar. There's like a lot of really great like Yunnan restaurants and like it, it's just like all across the street from Nanlong Gushang. I love that area. Yeah, oh, that would cool. be my favorite area. Like, I'm not a big fan of Nan like that that side. But as soon as you cross like the Gula Road, like opposite mm. is a really great one. And like two of my favorite like places are actually on that road opposite. Like, I really like a restaurant slash bar called Nina's, which is an Italian place, and another one called El Nido, which is like a Mexican. Ooh, El Nido is so good. Yeah, they're my favorite yeah. places. But Ooh. then I also really like 
Angulo Road, like Alba and Sara. And oh, um, I like that. Yeah. I like my hutong because yeah. it's nice to see people. Like, it's quite like, oh, yeah. It's going to think, like, it's going to think impressive. I just like walking around it. So I was going to bring this up later as a topic, but since we're kind of on the topic now, you guys both live in Hutong housing, like in the Hutong areas, which has always been my dream. Um, can you give us a little insight into what it's actually like living in a Hutong? And if you're watching this and you may not know what a Hutong is, it's basically the really old school alleyways you can find in Beijing. Very, very traditional feeling. Um and yeah, traditionally the housing in hutongs were very like kind of cramped and, you know, shared toilet and um, running water just in one section, but now they've become kind of modernized. So anyway, enough from me. What's it like living in a hutong? Um, give me everything, all the everything. I want all the details. <laughs> all the things. Uh, yeah, I've lived in my hutong uh, almost two years now. Like right when I first moved here, basically I moved into one because like I've always wanted to live in like the traditional mm -hmm. style of Beijing. Um, I like really love the local feel and all the little shops around. Um, but mine is like a really small like little hutong because I live near Lama Temple. If anybody's familiar Ooh, with that, yes. it's like right near the center of Beijing, it's a little bit pricey to live in the center of Beijing, uh, but I love it because the hutong area it's really cool. It's a very local neighborhood I have these neighbors that I see and say hi to all the time <laughs> you'll see like the guys sitting outside every night like smoking cigarettes and having a chat um or like the ladies like preparing dinner and stuff and little oh. kids running around and so I love the whole like local neighborhood feel of it um yeah. and then the hutongs itself is just yeah a lot of them have been more renovated like um the hutongs before didn't have like bathrooms inside they had like neighborhood yeah. hutong bathrooms which you'll still see if you like walk through the hutongs. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them have been renovated. It's very popular for foreigners to want to try to move into hutongs now, like we are yeah. living in them. Um, so they've renovated them a lot, made it nicer. You'll have like more Western style bathroom. You'll have air conditioning and heating. A lot of hutongs will have like heated floor because Beijing mm. winter gets very cold. Um, so now yeah, it's like a really fun way to like live and experience more local traditional side of Beijing life. I love that yeah. so much. What about you, Nico? Are you at Hutong's close by or kind of? Um, a lot, yeah, kind of close. I think I could cycle to yours in like 15 minutes. Yeah, they're kind of close by. I yeah. live like, I, I live like near, yeah, pretty much. I live mean, like a few blocks away, but like a few blocks away, but like a block of Beijing's quite big, bigger than you think. But um, I mean, you could cycle there pretty quickly, I uh, I would say. Mm. Um, I live like in a slightly less um, renovated area, maybe I would say. It's a bit more like a local hutong. There's not Ooh. really any like, there's a few restaurants, but it's not kind of like um, gentrified that much as as much as like mm. Nanugoshing area and stuff like that. Um, no, I love that more traditional yeah. feel. I love it. Like I've obviously like it features quite heavily in a lot of my videos. And I did like a hutong house tour when we first moved here. Since then, my my hutong has improved a lot. I've bought some better things for my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's now been like three years, so yeah. that's okay. <laughs> and at first, it's a bit bare. We didn't even have a TV. Like, <laughs> but you can see what it's like on my channel. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just love like the feel when you walk around the hutongs, you see the same yeah. faces and like, uh, you know, it's just such a nice community to live in. It just feels yeah. like, mm. and also with you living like on the ground rather than like, mm. we lived in like a 20, like, on the 20th floor in Nanjing and it was just so much effort. Whereas now <laughs> I'm just like, I can walk straight out my door and I'm like, yeah, I'm on the ground. <laughs> love that ease yeah. of access but I, I am monitoring the chat a little bit and a lot of people are commenting on the fact that it is super sad that a lot of those hutong areas are slowly like disappearing and getting smaller i know that it, a lot of those sections have been put under protection um by the government like you know this is a, a like a historic area we're not gonna nothing's gonna happen here but it is good it is shrinking that space which I find a huge shame and I remember when I was in Shanghai in 2014 they had a lot of like super traditional areas not hutongs um but it, like kind of traditionally alleyway things and going back now they're like hardly any of them are left so I find that yeah that's really sad do you do you see that happening like it getting smaller is that something that you've seen yeah, actually, in the last few years, they've been really um, 
changing the Hutong areas in Beijing. I know right before we both moved here, actually, Eppard was telling me that that summer, 2017, 2018, a lot of like traditional hutong places were shut down all these like favorite restaurants all these like local little places because the city wanted to renovate a lot of areas um but but it changed a lot of the feel like everybody was telling me you should have moved to beijing like a year ago like they yeah. shut down all our favorite hutong places um but in some ways it's it's different but it's also nice um because last year um close to my hutong area lama temple they renovated the whole street like the whole street was closed that. down for several months yeah and it yeah, was like I there was all this construction that. going on over there. Yeah. And then they yeah. like totally redid all the outside of the buildings to make it look like more of the traditional Hutong style, which was really interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. So I feel like some of that's still going on. Yeah. I feel like it was a big thing when we just moved and they like bricked up a lot of like open windows and stuff, which mm. I think is a real shame because some of the like Nina's, like for instance, Nina's had a beautiful like doorway you'd go in and now it's just like a hole and it's kind of, mm. I think things like that are quite sad, but it doesn't seem to be as like noticeable maybe last summer to this summer. So yeah. maybe like, I'm like praying like that was it and hopefully yeah. it will get I hope so too. Worse, for me, a lot of Beijing's character comes from those hutongs. And so my one yeah. of my favorite things it was walking around there and I feel like mm -hmm. I know that a lot of them have been renovated and um you know that have been tidied up a lot but I don't know I feel like walking through there I kind of get directly transported almost to the past and you know you see people living how they've been living for a really long time and maybe they've been born in that hutong and um yeah I, f I feel like it would be a huge shame if that was to disappear but yeah I guess it's out that's out of our control really <laughs> I also like how it's kind of quite like low. I feel like um, you kind of don't get that in a lot of Chinese cities. Obviously, there's a lot yeah, of high yeah. rise buildings. In terms of like, it kind the, of feels like the center is yeah. like really like low, like mm. nice, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, yeah, you don't feel like you're in the middle of China's capital. You feel like you could be, you know, back in yeah. the olden days almost. Yeah, okay. um, yeah, it is really nice to have that and a sense of like calm and peace um, in the middle of the city. Well. Beijing is so huge. Like, um, yeah, there are a lot of nice little peaceful places you can go. But I know in Sydney, our CBD is probably like a little speck in Beijing. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, crazy. Um, well, we've talked about our hutongs. Um, anything you'd like to add on the hutong topic before we move on to Great Wall? <laughs> <laughs> um... I'm sure there's a million more things I could okay. say about it, but here's, like here's, um, here's something I want to ask. Give me your favorite thing about living in a hutong and your least favorite thing about living in a hutong. Hmm. Hmm. Um my favorite thing would probably be like how like, well, we just talked about like the character and stuff. I really like the character and like how convenient it is. Mm. And my mm. least favorite thing is like the upstairs of my hutong gets like really, really hot because it's like a mm, mine too. Roof and it's like a yeah. black tar roof, and wow. it's really hot in the summer. Um, that's why I prefer winter because I've got the other stuff here. And also, my drain smells really bad. And I mentioned this in one of my videos because <laughs> I don't have a U bend, and everyone's like, "You must have a U bend." I don't have a U bend in my upstairs sink, and it smells really bad. So I hate oh. that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like mine's kind of similar. The uh, probably the worst thing, or one of the difficult things, at least in my hutong, yeah, it gets hot up at the top. It's like um, a loft kind of, yeah, so it gets yeah. hot there. But then during the winter, it's really cold. I don't have heated floors. I do have a heater, but I don't have heated floors. Mm. So maybe that's why I hate winter here so much. <laughs> but overall, it's not bad. Like it's fine. I have a heater. So I'd say like that's one of the more inconvenient things about living in a hutong. Yeah. But because like I love the neighborhood and I love the traditional side of being in this area and the convenience, like you said, Nico, um, that more than makes up for it. Yeah. Oh, nice. I can't wait to one day live in one myself. I can't wait to be back. Um, yeah, super, really, really Aww. missing it. But hopefully it's not too long, too much longer. Anyway, um, on to a very, very fun topic, which I'm really excited to discuss, the Great Wall of China, which is, of course, there's a lot of sections close to Beijing or in Beijing. Um, and Rachel is like the expert on Great Wall. <laughs> 
And we all have some fun stories about the Great Wall that we're going to share about our experiences there. So first of all, I want to start with you, Rach. So how many times have you been (laughs) through the Great Wall? (laughs) Have you got a tally? Uh, uh, I think it's at 12 now or 13. 13 times, I think. 13 times. Wow. And do you have a favorite record? (laughs) Yeah. Like, do you have a favorite section? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I actually have some photos to share of that Please, in a little bit. Share. But yeah, do you want to see it? Do you want to share it? Do you want to see it now? Okay, because I'll I talk a little bit right about now. my. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys. Um, because I have I have like a few like I have two favorite sec- t- two favorite sections I would recommend. So let me let me show you guys. Okay. Because there are lots of different sections you can go to, like you guys. Probably now. Can you guys see now? Oh, oh my gosh. Guys, like this is what I'm talking yeah. about. Like, <laughs> are ridiculous. Oh, it's gone really zoomed in. Okay. Is it gone? Yeah. Can you see it now? I couldn't see it now. Yeah. Do I need to make this big screen or is it fine? It's all right. That's fine like that. I think if you go big screen, it might be hard for you to. Uh, <laughs> also, look at you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Um, okay, so yeah, this is like um, one of my photos that I took with my tripod um, introducing the Great Wall to you guys. So I'll just talk a little bit like briefly, I'll give kind of like a brief overview of the Great Wall sections and a few of my favorite ones and some cool experiences that you can um, try there. And we can kind of like just jump in if you guys have your own stories and things to talk about. Yeah. Um, but basically you guys know, like if you're trying to go to the Great Wall from Beijing, there's lots of different sections to go to. A few of the more popular ones are Badaling. That's very popular with the Chinese tourist crowd. Um, so I don't really recommend that one to people trying to visit the Great Wall. Um, but then there's also Mu Tianyu, um, Jin Shenling, Simatai, a few other popular ones that people have heard about before. Um, So just a few things like when people ask me all the time, which section should I go to? Where do I go? Because you want to have a really good trip, especially if you only have one chance to visit the Great Wall. So it's just good to recommend to think about before you go like the hiking difficulty. Some sections are restored or unrestored. So you want to make sure like if you're not in super top physical shape or if you're traveling with young kids or older people to think about that. Um, Think about the transportation. There are some trains. There's a train that goes to Badaling. Otherwise, you need to figure out public buses or book a private van or something to go to the wall. Um, Mm -hmm. Also, the distance from Beijing, if there are going to be crowds, and then also the season and the weather, because that will really impact your great wall trip. So (laughs) that was my tour guide, (laughs) Rachel Voice. (laughs) Let's go to the fun fun part. So uh, Mu Tianyu is one of the best ones to visit. I think if you have one chance to go to Beijing, you're traveling with some friends, or your family. This is a popular one because it has the toboggan ride down this, the side of it. It's got great views. It's not a super difficult hike. So this is kind of the one I recommend. And when my sister visited me, I took her here because it's just, it's a really fun one. And it's not like a yeah. crazy exhausting. I took my parents there too. And we went on the toboggan. It was all very yeah. fun. <laughs> I like it. Oh, yeah, it's, a fun, yeah. it's a fun day. Um, so yeah. that's, that's a good one. Um, yeah, and you almost my feel person- like an ancient Chinese, you know, I'm sure yes. they had the toboggan back in the day, you know, <laughs> Definitely. Very traditional, structure. traditional Chinese <laughs> 5,000 years of toboggan history. I know, <laughs> gorgeous <laughs> history. <laughs> Um, this like goes to my next one, Jin Shenling, which is my personal favorite section wow. of the Great Wall. It has the most beautiful views, the best hiking, and it's farther away. It's like two hours outside the city. So it takes a little bit longer to get to, but it's 100% worth the drive because I never see many people there. Um, I mean, depending on the time you go, but really not many people are there. It's very easy to take great photos here because people aren't around. You can hike at your own leisure. Um, and it's just gorgeous. Like I've been during different seasons, like during summer and spring and winter. Um, and every time it's just a gorgeous place to visit. So can you this zoom in on that one on the left? Sure. That looks like an amazing photo, the one on the left hand side. I, I just want to see it left. closer up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Now? Was it really cold to shoot that photo? It was, <laughs> it was freezing. Oh my gosh. So I have a photographer friend. I actually did not take this photo. I have a photographer friend that I went with and he was like, let's go shoot sunrise. It's, there's going to be snow. And I was like, I haven't hiked in the snow on the great wall before. It was always on my bucket mm. list. Um, so we woke up really early um, and we had this plan. I was like, I want to wear my red dress, but it's freezing outside and I don't want to like die of hypothermia mm. just for these photos on the wall. Like I'm going to be like safe about it. 
So like I bundled my dress up under my big coat and all these layers. And so he would be like, okay, let's take a photo. And like in like 10 seconds, like rip all my clothes off, whip out my dress, take a few photos and then huddle back under my coat again. So it was like a process we had to do several times because it was freezing. Oh, it's um, a fantastic <laughs> photo. And guys, like if so you want to see more photos like this, go and follow Rachel on Instagram. You will not be disappointed. Um, <laughs> Wow, and I love like sharing stuff. behind the scenes too. Yeah. So you can see like, uh, I'll share videos of me like taking my clothes off to put my dress out and <laughs> you know, I mean, that sounds weird. Okay. <laughs> to show my dress, Fine, like things like that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so Jin so, Shang Ling, your favorite. Jin Shang Ling, or, absolutely my yeah. favorite. My second favorite would be this one, Huang Hua Cheng which is a lakeside section, really beautiful by the lake. Um, I didn't know about this one for a long time, but I would recommend it if you want a different kind of view of the Great Wall next beautiful. to a really popular, like beautiful lake. So this is a really nice one as well. Um, then here's another really interesting one. I think Nico, you've been here. This is a Simitai Gubei Watertown one, and it's really cute. There's a section of the Great Wall right next to this little like water town. Um, it's a little bit touristy, but it's fun. You can walk around the town, go to the wall, um, and you can also like stay in one of the hotels nearby. There's like some spas. So this is a fun one for like a little weekend getaway trip. I, I haven't um, been there. No, I've only been to. I haven't. Jin Chenling, um, we did like a hike from Guobeco to Jin Chenling, and I've been to Matanyu, and that's it. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, those are a few of my favorite ones. Um, there's a lot of other ones you can go to as well. There's some restored, yeah. some more unrestored. It really just depends on the experience you want, how much time you have, all of those kind of yeah. things. Um, there's a few other things about the Great Wall that I love. So I've camped on the Great Wall a few times, which is a oh. really cool experience. <laughs> yes! This is like a big thing for a lot of people. Like if you've got extra time, I highly recommend camping on the Great Wall because you can camp out, watch the sunrise. Um, it's really, really great experience. Um, so I've camped on it twice now. Um, there's yeah. a few different companies you can book with actually, and they make it mm. super easy for you. So the first company I went with is called Great Wall Fresh, um, yeah. which is a really popular like um, booking uh camping trip that you can do in Beijing. It's really yeah. far away, actually. It's like two and a half or three hours outside Beijing, but they come yeah. pick you up at the metro station. It's like a little family run business. They cook some really good food for you before you go hike up the wall. It's on a really unrestored section though. And I've, you know, this is one of the most unrestored sections I've seen. It's just like yeah. really rocky. Wow, um, yeah, I actually went in October though. So we camped out and we were fine, but in the middle of the night, it got super cold and it rained a lot. So, <laughs> and the tents got super soaked. Um, it was still a good experience, but I highly recommend like, make sure you do a little bit of research, check the weather. Uh, yeah. Probably don't go in October or November when it'd be cold and rainy, but it's still yeah. a lot of fun. And they had all the tent equipment and like all of that for us that when we got there, so we just had to hike up with it, but we didn't have to worry about bringing it by our own self. Yeah. Um, and then the other time I went camping was actually just like a month ago. Um, and it was with a tour group in Beijing called CET Trip. And it's really great. They do lots of little day trips from Beijing, um, lots of fun activities. So if you're a foreigner living in Beijing, I highly recommend you follow them on WeChat because this is yeah. how I like do a lot of fun day trips from Beijing. Um, and they do a camping trip as well. And this was actually mm. at the lakeside section of the Great Wall as wow. well. And it's so beautiful. Um, and they also organized like a little barbecue for us. We got some food. Um, then they also had all the tents and the equipment for us again. And so we just hiked up the wall with it, camped out. It was so great. The summertime was awesome. Uh, we just hung out, had some drinks, had some barbecue. It was a good time. Played some music, played some cards, woke up early to watch the sunrise. It was, it was amazing. Um, so I highly recommend like camping on the Great Wall if you have the chance. Yeah. There's some people who like also book it on their own. Like you can organize it yourself if you have your own equipment and you organize a driver. Um, so it just kind of depends where you want to camp and what kind of experience you want. Um, and that leads me to my last thing. I'm sorry, I'm talking like a million miles an hour. I just <laughs> no, great love intro. the Great Wall. <laughs> I love the Great Wall. So I'm very excited about it. Um, yes. <laughs> and then my last thing, my last experience to talk about on the Great Wall is there are lots of different festivals you can go to usually mm. every summer. Um, there's the, I think there's the Great Wall Music Festival, there's Yin Yang Festival. So Nico and I actually were at Yin Yang last year together on the Great oh, Wall. Oh, it was at Jin Shanling. I think you're in this photo. There yeah, you are. <laughs> 
It was so fun. And like they have all these, they had like three different like stages with different like music and different DJs lined up for the whole night. And you could literally just party all night long on the Great Wall. Um, they had hotels nearby that you could book to stay in as well as like tents you could rent. Um, but some people just partied literally the whole night long, watch the yeah. sunrise, listen to music. It was so fun. I'm so disappointed. I can't do it again this year. It was a well, good time though. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like that looks amazing. Um, so like there seem to be so many awesome activities you can do on the Great Wall. Um, so I've never done the festival. I would love to do that festival. Um, I have, uh, there's also a marathon you can do on the Great Wall that seems to be quite popular, but I find that would be super dangerous. Like, is it just me or like, you've got these little like rock hard. things, like and little bits the, of ancient wall. Yes, like, yes. And the Great Wall was, was designed so that the steps weren't going to be even. So like, you're not yeah. constantly having a steady pace. You have to like adjust every step because some are higher or lower or more spread out. I don't know. Crazy, huh? Like I, yeah, I don't know okay. how people would do that. It maybe if someone has done that marathon, they could comment in the chat. Um, I would love to know more about it. Um, one thing I did do on the Great Wall, I participated in a <laughs> yoga class on the Great Wall, oh. which was uh, very fabulous. Um, very lovely uh, way to relax on the Great Wall. Um, but yeah, I have been to many sections myself, um, not as much as yourself, Rachel, but I, yeah, definitely when I go back, I need to expand my horizons. Um, I particularly like the look of that lakeside one, but um, yeah, so I, really I think and I the camp big, as well. Oh yeah, you, you want to camp soon, Nico, yeah, but I like yeah. you've participated in probably the coolest thing that anyone <laughs> could do on the Great Wall. Oh, Nico, can you tell sorry. us? Can you tell us here today what you did on the Great Wall um, uh, recently? Yeah, I can. I have a, I have a photo. So Please I don't know who, uh, if uh, you, if uh, most people know this, but I did, I did mention it. But uh, me and Jack, we took our wedding photos on the Great Wall. So this was probably my favorite wedding photos. I'm just going to share one. Oh, uh, so gonna it's bore, so beautiful. So bore beautiful. you with my wedding photo. But we are going to try and make a video about it. So you can watch that and I'll bore you with them on that one instead. Oh, um, so good. Yeah, we mentioned it in one of our last videos. So yeah, Aww. so we actually got married on Christmas Day, um, 2018. And we went to Mitanyu because there's a really beautiful, um, there's a really beautiful hotel, <laughs> a really beautiful hotel like near there called the Brickyard. And so we got married with there and went up to Matanyu to take some photos with tripod because obviously Jack's in front of the camera. Um, and <laughs> Rachel, it's like, oh, so you, you did a tripod for those photos. It wasn't a photographer. Yeah, we did. No, no, no. It was wow. just so we took us. Oh, um, they're beautiful. Thanks. It was beautiful light. And it was the same thing as like what you were saying. Like it was so cold. Like I just, I can't even explain how cold it was. Like, yeah, wow. there's no snow. Cause it was like minus 10 or 15 or something. And it looks, we had to keep doing the same, like putting our coats on, oh. like warming our hands up and then like quickly throwing our coats off oh. and posing. Uh, so we, we did a few different places. <laughs> it's difficult, right? It's so hard. Yeah. And also, like and you're like we gotta dark. do it for the photo. <laughs> and also, it gets dark, so like um, at like five or six, so, like quickly because it shuts at five. So yeah, we 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 mm. we did it, and it's great. And I have some more photos, so hopefully we'll do a video soon if you want to see. Yes, see please. This is I'm my this is eagerly my awaiting. One. It's beautiful. Oh. oh man, what a beautiful place to get wedding photos taken. Yeah, we mm. thought we could have really. Um, That's cool. So I would love the, to do that. <laughs> like it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and probably the best yeah thing I've ever well. oh yeah. amazing <laughs> oh i'm excited for us to all be in beijing together and go to the great wall and, and vlog about it yes! yes oh my gosh yes rachel you'll be our tour guide um for sure <laughs> i'll just do whatever you tell me to do you'll be the translator okay <laughs> i'll be the translator i'll help us without communication Nico, <laughs> you can provide snacks oh yeah, yeah and entertainment for us and be tell a, us some jokes and entertainment. Or yes yeah <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good at snacks uh we always <laughs> snacks with us 
Jack, Jack has a healthy supply of snacks ready for me because I get very hangry. In places. I, I get hangry. <laughs> this ring here that I'm wearing, it says hangry. Oh. <laughs> I thought I was going to say something cute about your boyfriend. You're like, no, no. it says hangry because I get so hangry. <laughs> yeah, when I'm when I'm hungry, like I've been traveling with like my sister and my parents and my boyfriend obviously before and they know that when I'm hangry, you either want to feed me or get out of my radius because I'm usually <laughs> quite a nice person I'd like to think but when I'm hungry, like everything goes out the window and it's like all of my primal survival instincts just like kick in. So yes, I am also <laughs> always have a snack on me. Um, yeah. So Nico, I can really relate to you on that. Yeah, um. he's like, Jackie's like pocket sweets that he's like, do you, do, you, do you need a sweet? And I'm like, yes, I need a like, bribe, bribes it with you. Well, okay, yeah, it's in his interest. It. Keep you yeah. fed. <laughs> oh, you know. yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah. Are there any, uh, let's look at some questions for the, from the chat and see, uh, see if there's anything we would like to answer here. Um, mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, there are some weird comments here today. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been paying attention for a little while. Yeah, no. You know what? Maybe we just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> just keep talking. <laughs> what do you? What did you guys get up to this weekend in Beijing? What What mm -hmm. does your weekend usually look like? Uh, this weekend was kind of busy for me. So in like, I do Rachel meets China, but I also have a Beijing based organization and podcast called date night China, um, oh. where we talk about dating in China and what it's like. We share a podcast and we record episodes and we also plan events for it. Um, and we want to get people mixing and mingling and start conversations about what it's like dating in China, because like living in China is interesting yeah. and challenging, but dating in China is also a little challenging. Um, I met my different. boyfriend in China in Beijing. <laughs> Did you? How did you meet each I other? Did. Oh, the good old Tinder. Hey. <laughs> oh Tinder success story. Yes. yes. No. You should, yeah, no, it was very successful. Oh my because, God, yeah. you can totally be on my podcast. I'd love to be there. <laughs> oh <laughs> Talk about my experiences yes. on it's Tinder amazing. in Beijing. Yeah. Because some people I get a little discouraged here on Tinder. Oh no, I post, well, I like, I felt like in my heart, it was time. Like I need, I needed to like meet you someone knew. and I didn't, oh. I, I'm not, I don't really like going to bars or clubs. I'm not, I, I'm not a night owl. I'm a bit of a grandma. I want to stay at home and read like any time from 8 PM <laughs> onwards. So I was like, how am I going to meet anyone? And so I went on Tinder and yeah, I found that the, the, um, there's a lot of great options in, in Beijing on Tinder because like you already have so much in common with the person that you match with. Like, um, mm -hmm. and I, yeah, I found yeah. that I met a lot of really interesting people, um, like through that as a, as a tool of meeting people. So yeah, I would, I would yeah. love to talk more great. about it on your podcast. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we probably should. I would love that because it, it can yeah. be a little bit interesting or different. Like it's been a little bit weird during the pandemic time for yeah. a lot of people because usually the, Be Beijing is a huge international city with lots of international people coming and going, interesting people, yeah. like you said, and you're already like-minded, you're living abroad, you're that kind of person who wants that adventure, that lifestyle, so that's a lot of bonding. Yeah. But then there's a lot of challenges with like intercultural dating, people from different countries meeting and dating, mm -hmm. like you and your boyfriend are from different countries. I mean, yeah. um, so sometimes there's just gaps and bridges that you have to like communicate yeah, and figure out. Like I never thought there would be so many cultural differences between Australia and Germany, but that was naive of me. Like there are so <laughs> many and I, oh yeah, God, it's been God. really eye opening. <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's great. Oh my gosh. I would love to talk to you more about that. Um, so, cause we basically interview people about their stories. Like how did you meet? Like, or how has your dating experience been? And we started doing events now. We just had a trivia mixer this weekend. So that I was kind of busy doing cool. that kind of stuff. Um, so we just are trying to get like, mix and match people and just like give people a good time, start some yeah. conversations. So uh, it was good. Someone? Yeah. Have you met someone in uh, Beijing through your <laughs> methods? Like, <laughs> actually, here's a funny story. So, um, I run this podcast with two other people, um, two friends. One is a girl from England, Eleanor, and one is a guy from England named Nathan. You're dating him, right? Um, I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Get it, it took girl. some time. I mean, we, we did the podcast for like eight months. We were just like really good friends, and then you know. 
And now it Beautiful. now it's just like a funny like now we're dating and, <laughs> Isn't that and such a like, fun way to meet. Like yeah, you met it's a great story. You met doing a dating podcast. Like <laughs> I know. What are the odds? I never would have expected it was going to happen. Have you done an episode on it yet? No, we haven't. We're actually like on our summer break. So I think maybe, maybe in season two, we'll talk about it. I don't know. (laughs) I think people will be really surprised. If you could plug your podcast a bit, like where can we find this podcast? Sure. So it's called Date Night China and it is, mm-hmm. you can find it on Apple podcast, on Spotify, um, on most other podcast apps, um, or we have a WeChat official account so that we promote, we write articles, plan events. So if you just search cool. Date Night China on WeChat, <laughs> you can find us there. And and we like, we have all kinds of international guests and international stories. So it's not just, you know, like cool. foreign ex, you know, expats, it's Chinese voices yeah. and other voices. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So if anybody's interested in and dating stories and that kind of thing. Uh, we're cool. doing a lot there. <laughs> You're yeah. a busy bee, Rach. It sounds busy. I, <laughs> it's busy, but uh, it's so fun. I enjoy it. I get to meet a lot of yeah. people, talk to a lot of people. I meet a lot of friends that way now. So it's fun. Yeah. It's good. Oh, I, I bet. Oh, well. To know if like people that like go into your mixes like me, that would be really good to get on your show if they like hit yeah, it off be and great. stuff. Um, Amy, yeah. so this, this question came up, which reminded me, Amy, you went on a dating <gasps> show. And- I did. Oh my God, you did. How is that? I did. How well, like, that? yeah, so that was crazy. Uh, actually, I would have a lot to talk to you, Rachel, about dating in China. <laughs> yes. it- I, I watched that video that you did. I would love to talk to you more oh about God. that. Oh my gosh. I was, it's like an out of body experience. I can't believe that that was me. It was honestly one of the weirdest things that I've ever done. But yeah, like I was posting on Weibo, like some videos and stuff. And then um, one of the producers um, reached out to me and was like, hey, are you interested in being on this show? Um, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, why not? Um, and oh my so, <laughs> so we were talking and um, and then I went and met them in person and talked about like, you know, what I wanted to get out of the show. And um, yeah, so we talked about basically like what I was going to say because, you know, my Chinese isn't super good. I'm not really fluent and to be on TV and um, I wanted to at least know what to prepare and what questions they would ask me. So everything was pretty sure. planned. Um, so, you know. I knew what kind of questions they were going to ask and I knew what I had to prepare and um, yeah. And just like the craziest things happened. Like I asked everyone to do push ups. I got everyone on stage to do skipping. I think I saw like that. they were doing activities. That was so funny. Yeah. You don't I made it super TV, especially tiny TV shows. Well, the thing is that um, I did that because that originally was supposed to be a talent show and like they wanted me to sing or do a dance and, you know, I didn't really have much talent except for like kind of just getting on stage and perhaps making a bit of a fool of myself. So I got up and did some skipping and I was like, now it's your turn. And so everyone came up on stage and like did some skipping with me and then at the end I like had the guy that I chose or and then he didn't end up choosing me and then I came out in this panda hat and then I oh it was, it was really weird but um yeah I never saw or talked to that guy ever again <laughs> did, did you not go on a date with him or anything then no 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 he didn't choose me like I was rejected like oh you were rejected. there was no yeah yeah well, so you had to pick oh. each other. It wasn't like you so, did. I thought, and... I thought you got to choose one of them. Yeah. So, yes, I do. But then they have to choose you as well. So I think <laughs> they're told that they cho- you chose them and then they can, like, decide, like, like what no. they do with that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I can't really remember how that all happened. But I kind of knew that he was going to reject me. I think they kind of determined before I even went on stage that there was no no one there that was interested in that pairing. Um, So yeah, I kind of knew that that was going to be the, um, the outcome. And I was, to be honest, I was pretty keen for a bit of, you know, a bit of fun and excitement and a bit of the spotlight. And, you know, it's a fun experience that I can share (laughs) with my grandkids one day, hopefully. (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Even just a TV show in China is pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, that's definitely a, yeah. a random experience. TV shows in China are like, I've been on a few now. Um, and wow. It's always, yeah, yeah. It's 
Yeah, I did a little bit of that when I was studying um, there in 2017. I was on a couple of like Chinese language shows and I was on a Chinese language competition in 2015, or I think. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. I can't believe I did that stuff. I don't think I'd do it yeah. again, but. What a cool <laughs> we'll experience see. though. Do you feel like yeah. we wouldn't do it again just because it was, was it like stressful or just kind of like a little bit weird or interesting or just like a lot I of preparation know, like, you had to put in? Like, I think a lot of foreigners, when they go to China, they fall into the trap of doing a lot of the the white monkey thing, you know, oh, I'm going to go yes. on this TV show, I'm going to be that foreigner speaking Chinese, yes. dancing, singing. I don't know. I like I did it and I kind of realized that I don't really want to do so much of that anymore and like subject myself to being that like weird foreigner on the screen that people are laughing at. Um, yeah. so, After a while, you kind of get tired of that. Yeah. So... If it's in that capacity, no, I don't think I would do another show like that. Um, I would love to be on something like Shijie Ti Nian Shuo or uh, like informal talks. Um, it's that TV show mm -hmm. where there's a bunch of essentially white dudes that come together um, and talk about world affairs. But there's never any girls on that show. And I'm like, where are the ladies at? Um, I don't think my Chinese is good enough to um, be on that show. But I would at least love to see some female representation on those shows. I know that um, there's one um, awesome, uh, one of my friends in Beijing, Pinky or Sing Yun, she, um, she went on that. And uh, wow. yeah, she was really good. She, her Chinese is incredible. Yeah. Wow. wow, that would be really cool. What a great thing, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Maybe when you come back to China. Maybe, maybe, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, that's my little experience with Chinese TV. <laughs> <laughs> what a great time. I was on the Chinese news one time, but I was so unprepared for like how to handle that because it was my first wow. year in China. I didn't speak any Chinese. But it was interesting because it was like in Hunan province, I lived in a small little city um, and we took a few, like a trip to the countryside and we were like in this mm. flower field. You know, in the springtime, all the yellow flowers, like the, yeah. what are they called? I think they're called like rape flowers, I think. Um, but they were really beautiful. <laughs> <Rape> <laughs> so like, yeah. isn't that what they're called? Yeah. Yeah, like the, yeah. Yeah. Flowers. yeah, it's really beautiful. And so I took a trip mm. there with some of my university student friends or students, yeah. And um, there was a news camera there at, or a camera TV studio. And they were just like taking videos and shots about the flowers. And they were like, oh my God, why go on, why go on? You know, like they weren't expecting to see a foreigner in the middle of nowhere in this Hunan little city. So they were yeah. like, hey, can we talk? And they were like, do you speak some Chinese? You know, you know, I'm like, so they're like, okay, it's fine. You just speak in English and we'll just translate it underneath you later on. So, so that's what I did. It was, it was really big. Thing. But at the time I was like, wow, I was on the news in China. That's I'm pretty cool. sure it was just like on a, like a local TV station. I'm sure it was nothing big. There's probably like a hundred people that watched it. So, but I felt like, wow, this is interesting. This has never that's happened awesome. to me back home. Yeah, no, that's fun. Really cool. I've been on, t I've been on, I think twice, maybe three times. Oh. I think I was on one of the things. Uh, when we went to Inner Mongolia, there was a, a camera crew there and that was the local news as well. And I just, had to, I was just speaking about the, the place that we were staying in. And then we went skiing um, in Janjeko. Janjeko? Is that right? Yeah. We went skiing there and they, they, made me go on the news there and I think that was the Beijing news um and wow. I had to speak about doing this paper cutting like the woman who like got us like a good deal on the hotel she was like oh do you want to come and do paper cutting and I was like no I kind of want to ski and all that she was like yeah we're gonna do paper cutting like we'll make me do it and then I made me talk about it and I was like okay Sure. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Uh, I think you get roped into being a foreigner in China. Once I was um I was in Shenzhen with my friend Ben, and we were filming some vlogs for my channel, and we were on the beach, and and then there was a filming crew there, and they were like, "Hey, like, do you mind being in this promo video we're shooting?" And we were kind of like, "Oh no, we're all right." And they were like, "No, please, can you please just be in this video? Just walk down the beach with a, a couple of other foreigners," and and then they were like. We were there for like 50 minutes running up and down the beach, twirling. They were like, oh, come on, look happier. Like, come on, like, be happy. You're on the beach. And I was like, what is going on? It was so weird. I wonder where that oh, promo wow. video went. Like, I would love to see. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Well, um, 
let's see if there's any last minute questions here. Otherwise, we'll think about wrapping up this live stream. It's been so much fun. Um, oh, this is an interesting question. What is the biggest misconception people have traveling, visiting to China? Uh, what's the safe? What was the safety issue? Well, I would say in terms of the safety issue, I've never had a problem with my personal safety in China. I've been to a lot of places. I don't know if you guys have the same experience, but I've never felt um, in danger or unsafe in China. It's probably of the countries I've traveled to, it's probably one of the safer places. What do you guys reckon about that? It's the safest country I've ever been to, I would say. Yeah. I agree. I like I travel alone everywhere. And even like um, I've never had a problem when traveling by myself. People have always been friendly. I've always felt really safe. Um, yeah. And also even just living in Beijing in a big city, I go out a lot at night. I travel by myself. I walk around the city in the dark. I mean, of course, use like common sense that you would use in any country when you're by yourself or traveling, yeah. that kind of thing. But I've always just felt very safe yeah. here. Yeah, I'm the same. Like I uh, Sydney is a very safe city and Australia is very safe. But even I wouldn't walk through a public park at night. But in China, like walking through a public park, like you'll the craziest thing you'll see is some people playing chess or cards or yes. dancing around. Like dancing, they're just square dancing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so, yeah. I can be good. Nice. I, like like I, I used to live in Nottingham, which isn't uh, the safest city in. No, in, I haven't um, heard things. <laughs> I mean, it's like nickname called Shottingham. Um, so I, I used to get a taxi to like the end of my street and I used to run down the street because I said, yeah. whereas here, like 2 a.m. I would walk walk around. Well, I mean, like on my like on my own here and I just wouldn't feel the same yeah. like, level of unsafety. Mm, um, but I think yeah. what a big a big misconception here is although some places are difficult to travel if you don't speak. Uh, Chinese I would say that uh, quite a big misconception is that it is really hard to travel in China like mm. if, as a tourist like you have to do take a tour or like you have to go with like a guided you, you know like there's a lot of uh, people from mm. like that come in to just travel China and they do a lot of tours and it's like you can travel China on your own there are English signs people are really helpful you can use mm. like translate apps I think some places are obviously a lot more harder if you were going like not to big yeah. not to cities but I think like to travel around China to go to big cities yeah. and stuff it's super easy it's much easier than yeah like, kind of plays like, into Joe's question Chinese. here he's asking yeah. can you get around without knowing Chinese and I guess um yeah you guys have said it's okay at least in the big cities um mm -hmm. especially with the help of modern technology I would always recommend like before you go to China, know some simple phrases that's going to that are going to help you out, especially when it comes to like getting on trains or, um, you know, uh, public transport, taxis, ordering rest in restaurants. Everyday Chinese will be like so helpful for you to learn when it comes to going to like smaller places. I'd say it's still possible. Definitely everything is possible. And I know a lot of people that have traveled around China extensively with zero Chinese language. Um, at all but yeah it definitely makes it a lot more comfortable and for me a big draw card of going to those smaller towns is to learn about people and how they live and the local specialties and I guess if you don't know the Chinese language you're not going to get that extra like dimension to your trip um, so yeah I'd say you can go anywhere without Chinese um, but I think your experience will be enhanced if you do know it but that's the same with every country like you're going to get more out of a trip to Thailand if you can speak Thai and you can speak to the people there you're going to get more out of a trip to Australia if you can speak English or Australian um, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of people are worried, especially if you're like for a trip. It definitely helps, but also people who are coming yeah. here to teach in China. I always get questions like, "I'm going to go live in China for a year. Do I need to speak Chinese?" And I basically, mm. you know, I always tell them the same thing. Like, yeah, you don't need to come here and know Chinese. Like, you're going to be fine teaching in the classroom. You can live yeah. here. There's lots of foreigners who live here and don't speak much Chinese, but it yeah. will greatly enhance your daily life and your travel yeah. experiences. Um, I mean, especially because of WeChat Translate, there's all these like technology translation apps and things nowadays that are gonna help you. Um, and a lot of the apps that you use in China to book train tickets or that kind of thing are in English, like we use C-Trip. Yeah. So you don't need to know Chinese to that extent, but it definitely is going to help you and like enhance your experience mm. here. Yeah, totally. Uh, what are, any thoughts on that, Nico? Or well, yeah, I mean, I already said my. I think so. and that is it. Yeah, I completely <laughs> like, agree. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Well, yeah. yeah. But, but what I would say is like, if you get Google Translate or something like download the offline version and then you can use it. <laughs> yeah. Where's the cockroach? <laughs> Is there? Is there? I don't know. What? I can't see it. Is there more? Can you in my house? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it like I don't know if there was. <laughs> I don't know. On your head. Someone commented, so maybe there was like it's. I maybe I had a cockroach in my house. <laughs> maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's something on their screen. I don't know. Maybe did anyone else see it? I don't know. Probably not. I just thought I'd let you know, just in case. I feel like everybody would be talking about it. Yeah. Although, as so last night we were like sat out in a Jack. Jack's gone to investigate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> get it. Find the cockroach. Go get it. You get him. Um, la- last night we were um, like in our courtyard and we were having a, a cider because it was <laughs> hey it Jack was really busy. Hi Jack. We can't hear. Oh, you can't hear. Oh, you can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we were outside have a, uh, having a drink in our little courtyard and I was like, Ooh. basically, I was like, what's that? And I don't know if you've ever seen these Rachel but these are like a myth- mythical creature here in the hutongs and they're called hutong weasels and they're like squirrels and they're like well they're weasels obviously I've oh, seen them but they look like I have- yeah and it like ran across the wall like above Jack's yes. head and I was like <gasps> wait yeah. inside your hutong yeah like on like on our courtyard like where we oh, inside I, I think like you meant inside your, inside your house I was like oh my god <laughs> no, 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 no. they're like oh, on our wall yeah. I was like oh outside yeah I've seen them running around late at night yeah and I've seen a cat. scorpion in our courtyard but an actual no. scorpion like a real scorpion yeah that's some Indiana Jones shit right there <laughs> that's crazy that's mm, crazy yeah. but but um yeah I don't know where this cockroach is I've not seen a cockroach I hope that there is one I'm sure it was just something on their screen. Um, I haven't heard, seen anyone else that says uh, so, says that there's any cockroach business happening. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, some people are asking when a foreigner is allowed to go to China again. I have no idea. Oh, I'll be going as soon as I can. The big question. The big question everybody wants to know. Unfortunately, yeah. none of us know. Sad. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, so, I don't know if that's going to be um, this year. Year, I would probably say it's maybe going to be towards the end, if that. I think whilst it's still bad in other places, then it, China's not going to risk it, and mm. I'm not surprised. Like, yeah. so yeah, mm. it's one of those. Uh, who who knows? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been a lovely stream. Um, I am just. Yeah, just seeing if there's any more um, extra questions there. But I think we've answered quite a lot today and I think we've provided a lot of uh, fun topics and I, I know I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it too. It was fun. I learned a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I learned heaps. I can't wait to just be back and put all of those tips to use. Um, but any closing remarks from either of you? Can you please let people know where they can find you on YouTube, Instagram, um, do all the plugs, anything you want to say? You could go first, sure. Rachel. Okay. <laughs> okay. So my name is Rachel from Rachel Meets China. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram. Instagram is my main profile. Um, or I have a blog, rachelmeetschina.com. Um, and then I also do a podcast and WeChat account called Date Night China, all about dating in China. So you can find me either of those places. <laughs> That's awesome. What about you, Nico? Um, so I'm Nico. Um, I have a YouTube. <laughs> I have a YouTube channel uh, called Nico Films. But if you just search Nico China YouTuber, then I will come up. Um, I make videos with my lovely husband Jack, and I also have an Instagram which is called We Are Nico and a website as well. Um, so yeah, but ma- ma- mainly YouTube. Um, so if you like Amy's videos, then you're probably going to like my videos yeah. too. Um, so, so <laughs> head over there, subscribe to my channel, and uh, yes. you'll get lots of good China content. 
Awesome. So everyone who's watching this right now, go and subscribe to these two ladies ASAP. While you're there, you can also subscribe to myself if you're not already. Um, you can follow <laughs> me on, the, on YouTube, a Blondie in China, and on Instagram as well. I'm currently doing a 50 days of Chinese food where I'm sharing 50 of my oh, favorite moments oh my of Chinese food. Your videos so, you so good. Every time I watch oh. it, I'm so hungry. I'm like, oh my gosh. Me too. So like. Good. You're like there. You can like go and get the stuff. Like I'm posting it and I'm like, oh, there, there. good thing oh. Sydney has some really good um food options. So I shouldn't complain too much. But anyway, um, lovely to speak with you ladies and um, have a good old chat. I can't wait to do it again sometime. And thank you to everyone who's tuned in, everyone who sent a super chat. And um, we will see you next time. Have a great Sunday night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>